Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas Vlogmas! Merry Christmas Vlogmas friend Miss Vlog. It is December 25th. I'm spending Christmas with Just Benson this year, which is <laughs> that's really okay. I love my puppy down. I just had to shut him out my room for two seconds though, because we just went on a walk. We just went to the dog park and I came back inside and I put my Christmas PJs right back on. I need to like clean his paws and everything before he can like jump on me. But yeah, this sun, jeez louise. I woke up pretty early. My mom called me at like 8 a.m. I don't even think she realized what time it was because I feel like they'd be forgetting that there's a whole time difference. And like three hours, that makes a difference. For her, it was like 11 a.m. For me, it was 8 a.m. Like that's a long time. <laughs> That's a couple extra hours, but it's okay. She called me to thank me for um, the Christmas gift that me and my sister got her. So we basically got her like a, I think we got her 12, yeah, 12 Pilates classes, Pilates and bar. She used to take Pilates a couple years ago and she really loved it. And she's just been so busy with work and stuff recently that she just hasn't really prioritized her overall like health this year in the way that I, want her to and the way that my sister wants her to as well so we were like not it was Nadia's idea and I was like that's actually a really good idea <laughs> um because I've, I I I've, I've gotten to the point where like I don't know what's in my mom anymore I feel like I've gotten her presents like my whole life even if it's just like something small like I don't be knowing what to get her but her and my sister I feel like they obviously spend more time together considering my sister still lives at home but like she knows like what she likes so I was like what are we doing her um so yeah that was like a really good um gift that we were able to do for her and i'm really excited because i want to see her back in her little fitness bag like my mom used to like she used to really be into running a lot and just like um walking and stuff and just like for miles like she used to do that she used to run a lot um and then she did her little pilates she had her pilates era a couple of years ago but she was actually like in a really bad accident where she was hit by a car um not even like in a car she was like walking on the street and she was struck by a car and ever since then i just feel like she's obviously her body just hasn't been the same she's had a lot of like back problems and things like that and i feel like it's just made it harder for her to be more physically active um but you know your parents get older and you just like want to make sure that they're around for as long as they can be and i just be thinking about you know i don't want her to get to a point where like she's not moving in and doing what she needs to do even though she she is very still active because she has to be for work but like so i'm really glad that we were able to do that my sister i shipped her gift last week on friday and they said it wasn't going to get there until tuesday which is tomorrow so she, her gift is going to arrive tomorrow um and i already let her know and she said that that was okay her, the gift that she got for me that's not going to arrive until either tonight or tomorrow morning i just checked the tracking and it's in los angeles but it's not out for delivery and i feel like if it doesn't say it's out for delivery by like 10 a.m then i'm not gonna get it today but who knows honestly it's really no rush like it's okay if i don't get it on christmas so yeah aside from that your girl really didn't do any i didn't do any major shopping this year like i didn't there were a couple of things that i really wanted to get myself but honestly i'm kind of just like prepping for 2024 to be a really prosperous year i feel like the greatest gifts i can give myself is like and i know this probably sounds so boring or whatever but like the greatest gifts i can gift myself is like discipline and structure and routine so i've really been like focusing on doing that now so that it's not even like a new year new me type of thing like i've been doing this i've been going to the gym really consistently which i love um it's 100 a part of my lifestyle now i feel like if i miss more than two days of the gym in a row i'm like girl what are you doing why are you not at the gym so that goes in line with like my routine and structure and being disciplined in that and consistency I've come up with an official posting schedule for 2024 for all three of my platforms. I'm I'm a bit overwhelmed because I'm like, dang, like, am I gonna be able to pull this off? But like I really want to be able to pull it off. Like I really, really do. So I'm 
going to be posting Monday through Friday on TikTok, one video a day. I'm gonna be posting Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Instagram. It'll either be a reel or a photo. And then I'm gonna be posting every Sunday and I think Wednesday. Yeah, every Sunday and Wednesday on YouTube. So you guys are gonna get two videos a week. And I'm like, I don't know what that's gonna look like, but that's starting in 2024. So give me a little bit of time to catch up and if i don't post i need y'all to be on my ass like i need y'all to be like girl what the fuck girl what the, what the hell that's gonna be my new posting schedule that's the gift to myself i'm like girl uh, aside from like other like business things that i've just been trying to get under um wraps and like kind of filter in with my new management this year i feel like that was a gift to myself and that wasn't even entirely me but like when i tell you guys like i have to tell you hold on but i need to tell you guys about the full circle moment that i had with my management so basically i've been wanting management since i moved to la i've been wanting management since i started being a content creator and i wanted it to be a career which is more more realistically like three years ago when i moved to la when I first moved here, it wasn't something I was looking into, but I knew it was something that people had and that it was a way that you were able to get more brand partnerships, you were able to get more money, like you were able to be invited to more events, all of that stuff. So I knew it was something that people had, but I didn't know how it worked. And I really thought it was really reserved for the content creators that have like millions of followers or like they're really big, like they've been around for mad long, you know? So fast forward to last year, Christmas of last year, 2022, I was doing research for a couple of months before that. I would say the fall time between like September and December, I'm doing research into like, okay, like how can I be brought on for management? How can I have management of my own? And I was like finding, I was coming across TikToks where like talking about how you can get management and different like tips and videos and tricks and stuff like that because you know you watch one video on tiktok and then they start showing you more of that content so I, I i think i liked one video and then they kept showing me more and i'm like okay like maybe this is something that i should look into so there were like different routes that i took like i definitely went to like fellow content creators that i knew were signed to a, an agency and i went and i looked at their bio and i would see what agency it was and then i would look up the agency on instagram and i would see who they're following and what their clientele looked like and what kind of sponsorships they did and i was like okay like does this seem aligned and if it seems aligned then i would reach out so i like dm'd a bunch of brands uh brand management agencies like last year the last two months it was like november december i was basically inquiring if they were um bringing on any new talent for the new year 2023 and some of them i followed like i follow a couple of them still because i was like okay like i want to be in the i want to be updated like when they're you know posting about that kind of stuff i want to be updated so like let me just follow them so i followed a couple of them and one of them that i followed and I DM, they hit me back and they were like, yes, we're actually, you know, currently looking to bring on new talent, new clientele for the 2023 year. Here's our email. Shoot us an email, you know, with a quick like summary of who you are, like what kind of content you create um, and why you want to be signed to our agency and i was like oh bet and i actually got that response from that agency and another agency that um is also like pretty popular and a lot of people are signed to and i was just like okay bet like i got too too hopeful like this is hopeful you know i don't know what it means but it's hopeful i took like probably like a day and i wrote like a really nice email like i just remember being really proud of the email i wrote like i really I spent a lot of time on it. I wanted to sound eloquent. I wanted to sound intellectual. I wanted to sound confident. I wanted to be sure that what I was saying was how I felt about myself and what other people feel when they follow me, watch my content, all of that stuff. So I really took my time on the email and I was like really proud of myself. I was like, even if I don't get this, like I'm really proud that I was able to sit down and kind of like write this little mini essay just on like who i am and what my journey has been up until this point because i I've, I've been doing this for a long time now like i've been doing this for years now i've invested years into this craft 
and into this career and it more recently became a career path for me but i've invested so much time into it and it's something that i'm so passionate about like i want to convey that in this message in this in this email that i'm writing so i wrote the email and i was just like really proud of myself and i was like okay i'm gonna schedule send it by 8 a.m so they get it at the, the start of the day it'll be at the top of the inbox and i sent it to the two um agencies and the second agency that hit me back the other one that was popular they immediately were like sorry we're actually um gonna go with like another option or something like, they gave me a very like you know nice response but basically telling me like they weren't gonna consider it and then the other one i think took like a couple of days and i got the email back and i was so nervous and i was like oh my god <laughs> I don't want to open this but then i opened it and they were like we love that you, we, we love what you wrote whatever but at this time we're actually going to be moving forward with other um talent or clientele or whatever they said really nice also really nice email and i was like bummed i was bummed because it was like it was literally like i want to say around this time last year like the last couple of days of december i don't remember exactly when but i just remember it was the end of december it was like right around christmas and and i was just so hopeful that it was going to pan out and that it was going to i was going to get it and be picked because it was like new year and i felt really good about 2023 and i was being really consistent on with my content and stuff and yeah i didn't get it and i was just super bummed i was super bummed but then i was just like i don't even allow myself to really sit in my kind of like uh i don't allow myself to sit in like my sad moments or my low moments for too long like i allow myself to feel my feelings and then i'm like okay cut that shit off we gotta get back to work like i i definitely allow myself to feel my feelings and my emotions i don't turn them off or anything but i'm like okay i don't want to dwell in this i don't want to sit in this for too long like there's a reason why they said no let me take that for what it is and pivot and do something else that's gonna eventually get me to that point you know so i took the no right and then i started i saw like one tiktok and this girl was like how you should start reaching out via linkedin to brand reps because a lot of them are on linkedin like you can literally find the brand representatives of you know beauty brands all of these brands through LinkedIn and message them on there. I was like, okay, that could work for like, if I'm trying to get on PR for certain brands, but like, what if I was trying to find another agency or something like that? Like, what if I was trying to find, you know, an agency representative that I'm speaking to specifically, like someone that works for the agency through LinkedIn. So I ended up finding a smaller, more boutique um, agency that was located in LA. And I found the like, a woman that worked for the agency like she was one of the um representatives and she was in charge of like influencer relations but they had just started opening up their influencer relations like sector of their their agency they strictly represented makeup artists and hairstylists in in the the industry so like you know the people that obviously do hair and makeup for like celebrities um for magazines for photo shoots for like big people like that's who they represented it but then i guess they recently were like you know the influencer marketing space has obviously become a really profitable lucrative space to be in like we need to start stepping into that room See, and i was like okay bet like maybe that's my way in because like they're new to it i'm new to it whatever so then i started like i never got signed to that agency but i definitely started working with the woman and she was basically like giving me pointers on like what i should start incorporating into my content what i should do more of um she never really told me what i should do less of because i don't think there's anything that i really post that i'm not that isn't 100 like me or authentic or anything like that but she definitely told me what i should post more of she was like you should definitely post more of these kinds of videos these kind of videos and it was like i took heed to her advice and i would incorporate it here and there but it wasn't it wasn't something i was 100 percent focused on because i was like i don't i don't remember there was a lot going on 2023 like towards the start of the year right but yeah i say all that to say i didn't um 
she didn't end up signing me the lady didn't end up signing me i didn't get signed to that agency i continued to negotiate all of my deals myself this entire year the, the entire 2023 i stopped one of the the major things that i did too i vowed by the end of 2022 that that was going to be my last year posting wig content um especially on youtube but just overall just i was going to stop wearing wigs I was gonna stop working with wig companies because all of 2022 i pretty much like most of my sponsorships were with hair companies and they do not pay you like if it's one thing i will say in terms of like working with hair companies they literally pay you crumbs in comparison to what you should actually be getting for your content for your engagement for your reach for the amount of subscribers you have followers on another platform like i just want y'all to know like all of those hair companies it don't matter which one it is and i've had this conversation with more than one of my friends that are also uh content creators as well and have worked with them as well like they really don't pay um it's very little in comparison to what you would get if you are working with like a brand that's you know and it's not even because they can't afford it it's not because they don't have the money or they don't have the budget these wig companies literally make billions of dollars like when i tell you the wig company and and we think that they're all different brands but they're really like all owned by the same the same people like the same people at the top they own all of these little brands and when one of them like let's say one of them has like a really bad like, like reputation or whatever they'll just like switch names they'll like close out that company name and then now they're switching names and they function and they operate under a different name so like they're all owned by the same people and it's a billion dollar industry it's literally if they have they have the budget they have the money you have to think about how the hair industry is really run by black women it's really run by women of color but black women specifically black women are the consumers they're the buyers they're the content creators they're the ones that make it look good like without black women wearing wigs u-parts tracks tapings clip-ins all of that stuff it, it would not exist like yes other women of other races wear those things as well but it's definitely nowhere near how influential and impactful black women utilize and wear these things so with that being said me knowing that they have the budget and then also hearing different numbers from different people i'm like it's just not worth it it's not worth it and then on top of all of that they're literally like if you try to if i would try to like incorporate the wig install into like a get ready with me or try to incorporate it into like me doing my hair and my makeup me doing my hair my makeup and my outfit me vlogging and putting it in a vlog so that it like you know it's in it it, it kind of flows better instead of just like me sitting down doing my hair they'd literally be like no you can't post that and if you post it then if you um if you don't change it or take out like everything aside from just you showing the wig then we're not going to pay you or we'll only give you a hundred dollars and it was like we agreed on a thousand or we agreed on 800 like and i would just be like that's crazy like you also had no creative control whatsoever like i just got so fed up it was literally that's what i dealt with all of 2022 but it was like also the main way that i was making like money through brand sponsorships because like youtube is obviously my biggest platform and that was the only brands that were really reaching out to work with me on youtube just and really like on all of my platforms like i wasn't really getting i would get like brand wig brands reaching out and they're like okay we want to do a we want a youtube video we want two posts on instagram and your insta story or whatever and they didn't really care about tiktok but it would be like instagram and youtube but like that was it like i wasn't getting emails from other brands i wasn't getting emails from you know makeup brands skincare brands fragrance brands nothing asking to work like to work with me it was always wig brands and i was just like well you know this is a i'm like at first i'm like looking at it i'm like okay that's a calm little like a video for 800 dollars. like that's not bad but then when you really look at how much like goes into it and the fact that they're you're supposed to be getting way more than that you're like wait a second i'm kind of getting played right now like i'm kind of getting gypped low key 
and I just by the time it got to the end of 2022 I was like I am not working with um, hair brands anymore and I also think that that's probably one of the reasons why the agencies that I did reach out to probably turned me down because truthfully I didn't really have a resume of like or a rapport with me working with like brands like there were some brands here and there but it was very few and far in between like it wasn't consistently and it wasn't like that was what my page was kind of filled up with my page is really filled up with like wig install videos and it's like that only caters to a certain industry it only caters to a certain demographic and also those companies just don't pay so it's like it doesn't even make sense to sit and kind of try and negotiate because they're not gonna budge when when you say no to two hundred dollars for a wig video there are 20 other people there are 200 other people that will say yes to the 200 dollars, and they're able to extend their reach even further because now they have 200 people that's obviously an like they have 200 people probably within a couple of months but like still they're extending their reach and reaching 200 people's different different platforms and there are thousands and thousands and hundreds and thousands of followers on different platforms versus paying like maybe 50 people but paying them higher because that's what they're worth that's what their content is worth and all of that so yeah i basically was like going into 2023 i was like you i'm never posting and i and i remember posting it on my story but i was just like i'm done like i'm done i'm fed up like i'm done i want to actually work with like brands that are going to pay me my worth and what i feel like and, and is a reflection of the the content and just like who i am as a content creator um and i like so much more than just wig brands like i like so much more than just hair like i love hair but i also love makeup and i also love skincare and i also love fragrances and i also love lifestyle stuff too like i love fitness and i love home decor like there's so much more to me than just posting wig videos all the time because those are the only brands that like are reaching out to me because that's all that they see on my page that was another thing that i totally switched up in 2023 and basically focused more on posting more beauty content posting more content that i feel like would be aligned with brands speaking on my favorite brands too that was another thing that the woman from the agency her name was kim the, that was the other thing that Kim basically told me. She was like, do more organic content on your page to where you're talking about things that you actually like. Like if you have a favorite um, SPF or if you have a favorite lip gloss or if you have a favorite foundation, like speak to those things, like show those things more, like show more product, talk about more product. And eventually like, you know, you'll have more of that on your page versus so I basically like archived a bunch of my um, wig videos too because that was also like totally messing up my um, overall like engagement rate for my YouTube channel for basically all of my platforms because even though like I used to be slaying the wigs down it was definitely they were my lower performing videos like where I would normally get maybe 20 or 30,000 or 40,000 or 50,000 views on a maintenance vlog or a vlog a weekly vlog or something my wig videos would probably do like seven or eight or nine or ten thousand views like definitely on the lower performing side so in the grand scheme of things it was also just messing up what I would be able to ask for from other brands because like it was being averaged into my overall engagement rate so i archived all of those posts and i was just like yeah i'm not working with no more wig brands and then i slowly but surely started to do it it took me some time i'm not gonna lie and i don't know like i would say within the past couple of months i really kind of also just fallen back in love with beauty and makeup and kind of like i'm feeling inspired i was also like really not inspired at the beginning of the year and last year like i was just so drained from <laughs> trying to pull things together and kind of just like make things work and i'm like questioning whether or not this is the career path for me and all of this other stuff and i was just really like at a low point like i'm like do i need to be doing this anymore because people are saying they fuck with me but like my content's not performing and i'm not making money like in the way that i feel like i should be making money and like it was just 
a lot of self-reflection but like me questioning a lot and like trying to figure out okay like what's going on is this what's supposed to be happening so i even started like looking for work in other places too like i'm like maybe i should get another job like maybe i should go back to like doing this but like it's not my full-time thing and literally like i ended up getting an email from this um influencer like ba banking agency called creative juice they'll basically invest in your content and invest in you and give you like a loan that you can pay off like in x amount of years and that's supposed to like you know help you get better camera equipment you know you can move into like a studio space or you can like upgrade your living um you're living in in certain ways so i basically ended up working with creative juice the agency to like get a like an investment loan and that really helped me so that i was able to like not necessarily stress about paying like my my standard of living like my bills for living i didn't have to stress so much about it and i was able to like still create content because it's hard it's hard to it's hard to create content be in a good mood be happy when you're stressed out and you're kind of depressed <laughs> like it's really not even kind of you're depressed you're stressed listen it ain't cheap life ain't cheap living in la it ain't cheap so i was just like really stressed out and that's why i was like dang do i need to get another job like dude what do i need to do and i'm making i'm i'm not gonna lie to you guys i'm making a good amount of money like i'm not i'm not doing i'm not doing bad but it's just like it felt like every time i started to make a little bit more it was like my expenses and everything kind of just met me a little bit closer so it was just like not that much leeway and and now to know I mean, I kind of knew at the start of the year, too, that with inflation and everything else and the fact that we're in a recession and all of that is like a factor. Like, I feel like what I'm spending on groceries now is crazy compared to what I spent two years ago when we were three years ago when we were in the pandemic, obviously, and things were like, I don't know, like everything it just seems so expensive so i got my little investment loan so i was able to like take care of a couple months of my rent and not have to worry about that um i was able to go on my trip to bali um which was really nice i was able to get a new camera the one that i'm filming on now get a like i got a whole new camera i got a new mic setup um new tripod and a new light and yeah like i was able to kind of just like put a little bit because i needed those things also to like elevate myself as well like you need to do things and invest in your craft and your and your hobby until it obviously becomes a career but then even continue to invest in yourself to allow it to grow like there's there are things that i want now that i know is an investment into myself that will help me grow to get to the next level like i definitely i think next year we're gonna incorporate an editor into this whole thing because i don't think i could do it by myself anymore like managing three separate platforms by myself is just it's really hard and it's a not it's not i don't think it's a manageable thing like i don't think that i'm i'm honestly thinking about the people that i know like my other influencer like friends and peers that i know that post on three or more platforms and i know that they have help like i know they have teams and i'm over here trying to do all of it by myself and it's just like that's not manageable jasmine you're actually going to drive yourself further insane and you're gonna crash out and burn out quicker than if you just went and you decided to like get help and delegate to somebody else and allow someone to help you but i have such a hard time asking for help i have such a hard time i have such a hard time relinquishing control truthfully if we're gonna be 100 percent honest like i have a really hard time doing that and also i do really do enjoy editing but i don't enjoy doing it all the time i don't want to do it all the time like i want to do it here and there but when you have three platforms that you're supposed to consistently be posting on and they all require different things it's almost impossible to not be editing all the time. That's something I know that I want for myself next year and that I will be enlisting at some point. Along with other things, I've been writing down my goals. I feel like I got a, a little off track. Oh, we're doing the full circle moment. So yeah, so yeah, I got that, I was able to do that. That took care of a couple of months and I was feeling really good. I started 
getting different by like I want to say by March so now this is three yeah like March April this is three to four months into the year and I'm not posting wig content anymore I'm strictly posting beauty stuff on on, on my like platforms I'm actually starting to get beauty emails like I'm starting to get emails and PR and stuff like that from brands that are not hair brands and I'm like thank you god oh my god I pray for time literally like I I literally I'm like yes this is exactly what I wanted like it's slow <laughs> don't don't think that it was like like that because it wasn't it was slow but I was starting to see it and I know that's because I was starting to switch gears like I completely switched gears and now I'm doing something else I pivoted and I was scared because I wasn't sure if it was gonna work and I was really scared because I was like dang like what if I make no money and then I really do need to like go and get another job or something I don't know but I'm starting to get the emails right and I'm starting to get little sponsorships here and there with other brands so yeah fast forward a couple months later now we're towards the end of the year um actually i got this email i think i got this email in july but it was for september through december so it was for the last quarter of the year but i got it in quarter three and this was my biggest sponsorship that i've gotten to date literally this was the largest number of money that I've ever been offered. This was the biggest brand that I've ever worked with. And I got the email to my inbox. And I knew it was serious because when I got it, they wouldn't even say who the brand was at first until I signed an NDA. And I was like, I'm like, what, <laughs> what is this? Like, at first I thought it was fake, <laughs> but it wasn't. And I sent in, and I could talk about it now because I posted about it already and you might know what I'm talking about, but you guys, literally my biggest, like this is my biggest brand deal this year and this is my biggest brand deal in my three years of being a content creator, in my 10 years of being on social media, but in my three years of being, this being an actual job that I make money from, this was the most money that I've ever been offered from a brand and it was with q-tips and i was like q-tips are the word like the q-tips like the q-tips like the original q-tip the original q-tip emailed me and i was like oh my god like this is crazy like i i i literally was like I wanted to shout it from the rooftops and tell everyone, but I was like, no, like I literally, I can't do that. But like, I was so excited and I was, it was crazy to me because I literally grew up using Q-tips. Like my mom keeps Q-tips in that, who doesn't have Q-tips in their house? But like my mom kept the box of Q-tips. Like we always had Q-tips. They always sat out on our, um, on our sink or in our bathroom and yeah i was just like baffled and i was like wow this is crazy and it took months of negotiating but i was able to negotiate that whole deal by myself which was also like pretty major honestly that was my first time really like negotiating where it was like they got lawyers i don't got a lawyer but they got lawyers their contracts edits of the contract going back and forth and and i was just like trying to i'm asking my friends i'm like does this sound like does this sound like a something that i should be doing like not even in terms of like the deal itself but just like what it entailed you know like there were certain things that i had to do in terms of like my content requirements and what i was you know supposed to do in that contract so i'm like going over it. i read the contract like probably a hundred times because i also just couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that q-tips reached out to me and wanted to work with me i was just like wow this is crazy um and the content requirements were for tiktok and instagram so i had to only post on those two platforms and that was like so major to me because those aren't even my largest platforms as you know youtube is my largest one with like 149k right now 
and then my second largest is TikTok. I think I have like 56,000. And then Instagram, I think I have 40, how much that, I don't even know, 44,000. So it just blew my mind. I was just like, wow. Like I said, it took a couple months. Like I think they reached out to me in July and it was for the final quarter of the year. So it took a couple months of negotiating, going back and forth, and then, you know, me actually getting the product and then filming the content and then submitting it and then waiting for approval and all of that stuff. It was literally months in the making. In that time, that was literally like, it was my largest deal, but it was my only deal that I got. Between third quarter and fourth quarter, that was the only deal that I was get that that I had. And I didn't really, I think in third quarter I did, I got like two, two or three deals. I think it was three in third quarter. And in fourth quarter I got one deal and it was that deal. And I was just like, wow, like that, I feel like if you're not, if you're not good with um, budgeting yourself, if you're not good with managing your money and knowing that as a content creator you're gonna have months or days or weeks where you're making a ton of money and then you're gonna have months days or weeks where you're making little to nothing that you need to make your money work for you and you need to you know spread it out and make sure you're not doing too much like that was a lesson that i learned because i was just like dang like i literally only have one deal for the last four months of the year and it was freak I was I was freaking out. I was I was honestly like again, I was entering like the last year. I was really stressed out about money and I was just like this um I don't know. I don't know. This is not this is feeling again like I'm in a place where like I'm unsure. Is this something I'm supposed to be doing? But then it's just like in the same breath I'm like, but you just got to deal with Q-tips. Like you literally just got a major deal like and where they paid you what you're worth like they literally paid you what you should have gotten in real in reality like you got paid that but in the same breath i'm like dang like why 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 aren't i getting other work why why are, why am i not making more money why don't i feel comfortable in the money that i'm making and that was like really where i was struggling and where i was at and then i remember one day i was just like I was literally home and I was just like, I need to, I need to like talk to somebody. <laughs> I think I tried calling a couple of my friends, but it might have been the middle of the day and they got jobs and stuff. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just go on live. I'm gonna just hop on TikTok live because I love going on TikTok live. Way better than going on Instagram live. I don't know. Instagram is filled with a bunch of apps. I don't want it. And you can't play music. You could play music on TikTok live. You can't play music on, on Instagram live. You play music and then your whole live gets shut down. And then they're trying to tell you you're banned from going live for X amount of time because you was playing music in the background. It's like, bruh. So I like going on TikTok live. So I went on TikTok live and I was on TikTok live for probably, probably like two or three hours. Like I was just sitting on there chatting. Like, I don't know. I think I might have had at one point, I might have had like 200 people in there. But you know how it gets put on the For You page and then the views go up. And then when people are like, mm, she's not talking about nothing, they leave. So but I was on for like two or three hours and I was just chatting with my followers and chatting with people in general. And they were, I, I was just getting a ton of questions about like, I always get a lot of questions about like, how did you become a YouTuber? How do you like LA? Do you feel like moving to LA was the best thing for you? Like they're always like, centered around being a content creator, living in YouTube, all of that stuff. So I'm answering a bunch of those questions and like literally just giving my advice. Like people are asking me, all types of stuff and and then I got this one comment from a girl and she was like hey Jasmine like I I just joined the live but I just want to know like do you have any management and then I saw the comment and I was like oh I was like hi like no I currently don't have any management and then she wrote back again in the comment section was like oh okay like I'm gonna DM you on Instagram um, right now like because I have like a opportunity for you or something and I'm like okay bet like I stayed on live for probably like another 45 to an hour after that and then when I got off live like I went on Instagram and I posted that I was on TikTok live and I'm going through my notifications and then I see the DM and I'm like oh yeah the girl said that she was gonna DM me so then I go and I look and she was like um how she works for an agency and she does like freelance management outside of the agency because like they're not always bringing on clientele and she's like interested in having a meeting with me and i was like okay cool like i went and i clicked on her page and the agency that she worked for 
was the one that I emailed last year that I was really bummed about not getting picked by. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> I was like, well, what are the odds of that? <laughs> Literally, like, I was like, hmm. So we set up our first meeting. Um, it went really well. I just really loved her energy. I loved her vibe. I feel like we just kind of got along. She's also, I think we're the same age or like, Close, really close in age so i don't know it just felt like i was talking to my friend like it was giving very much like oh hey girl oh hey girl and we were just keep keen you know but then the call was like really good and she also is like very like well versed knowledgeable in her field like this is what she does and i was just like i love that and she's black <laughs> and i always wanted black management like i always literally i always wanted a black woman as my manager like that was like literally my thing like i don't know i feel like i just want somebody that's gonna advocate for me that's gonna understand me that there are just like certain things you know like these spaces the spaces that we're in as content creators are very heavily white okay and it just i feel like it just means so much more that i have another young successful educated black woman like advocating for me speaking on my behalf like negotiating for me working with me like it's just it just hits different you know like it just hits different it means something yeah our first meeting went really well and she was like okay like i'm gonna like kind of go over you know certain things that you've given me because i like gave her like my you know like engagement and stuff like that my analytics basically and we talked about like what my goals were for like having management and all of that stuff and she kind of gave me a background on like how it works because I'm, I'm not a part of the agency i would be outside of it and um just like working with her which i was like totally fine with because at this point i was like listen at this point i'll take anything i mean not anything but i would take i would take this opportunity to do this because right now what i'm operating at it's not it's not sufficient and i and i should be able to do so much more i know i can do so much more so i was like you know what i'm down if she's down i'm down like i didn't really need to hear much else but i was like i'm down and she was like okay like we're gonna have another I'll, i'm gonna look over what you've like told me and you know everything and then i'm gonna um we'll schedule another meeting to kind of like really get into the specifics and the logistics and like contracting and all of that stuff and i was like perfect so i think like maybe like a week or so went by we scheduled another meeting for like maybe a week after that or like a couple of days after that i don't really remember exactly but it was like it was short it was it wasn't that long that she made me kind of wait but i want to say like a week or so went by and then we were like okay like let's have another meeting we scheduled another meeting and i joined the meeting and she was like hey so like um i actually like went over everything that you told me and i kind of like talked to you um talked about you to my colleagues and like the everyone that works with um works within the agency and they all really love you and they'd love like um my colleague would love to meet you today so is it okay if he joins the meeting and i was like oh i was like sure like i'm down like okay they love me what do they love about me uh, <laughs> i'm like yeah that i'm down like the more the merrier bring them on so her colleague joined the meeting and it was the three of us and we had like a great meeting a great meeting it went well like it went so well i i, I can't say anything negative about it it wasn't awkward like it was it just flowed it was a great meeting and i was like okay like that that felt really good like i was super nervous but i was also smiling from ear to ear the entire time like i was just super geeked and i was like this this is amazing so the meeting went really re went really well and they, they basically both told me like okay like so we're basically we're interested in having you kind of be brought on to the agency now like we love um your manager but we want to like you know we want to bring you in we want you a part of us so we're gonna review and like kind of get back to you and give you a final answer so i guess they had to like kind of go and take it back to the rest of the team and really see if it was going to be like a super fit or whatever and then probably like another week went by and i got the email <laughs> and your girl got I got signed i literally got signed to the agency and i was just like this is the same agency that a year prior dubbed me 
and I was like, this is crazy. Like, it's crazy because you think that like when one door closes, that, that it's closed. But no, baby, another, a window opened. A window might have been cracked and you just needed a little bit of time. You really needed to hone in on your craft. You really needed to cultivate and create more and really like be more intentional. I was so intentional this year. I can say that with a fact like I was very intentional about everything I was doing career wise like anything that I put out I wanted it to be genuine I wanted it to be authentic I wanted it to be entertaining like I was like I'm not just doing things just to make money I'm not just doing things because I need a check or because I'm trying to survive like even though we're all trying to survive but like I'm like no like be more intentional about your shit. And I was, and I feel like it really, I really feel like it paid off. Like I really do. I'm, and I'm still, it's still only been like a month or so since I've been signed, but like it's been so amazing that I could literally cry, but I don't want to cry. But like I literally could cry because I feel like it's my dream management. Like I'm not even joking. It literally feels like this is what I've been working towards like for all of these years. Like in terms of just like, how they operate they're so everything is just so organized and functional and and they just know things that i have no knowledge of because i didn't i don't have a marketing back background like what i do know about marketing is what i've learned through social media and what i've picked up along the way and what i've messed up and then realized my mistake like things there but like it's still there's so much of a learning curve for me and this is their field this is their thing this is what they're educated in this is what they're knowledgeable in this is what you pay people for literally like this is what you pay them for this is why they get the big bucks and i'm like this is amazing like this is literally what i prayed for i literally prayed for this i manifested it i worked for it those are like period period i'm just so happy like i got the email and it was basically like my contract like my my name all of that it was a draft up and they're like just let us know if there's any like errors or if you want to change anything or whatever so like read through that a bunch of times because i just couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that i was asked i was being asked to be a part of this agency that i have so for so long wanted to be a part of but then also like i was just like wow wow <laughs> wow like that's crazy sent it back i was like yeah everything looks good and I was just like, this is crazy. And they're like, okay, like we're gonna schedule your onboarding meeting uh, with you and the team like for next week. Um, so, you know, you can put that on your calendar. And we just got the ball rolling. And like after my onboarding meeting and then my strategy meeting, like that following meeting after that, I was getting brand deals. I was getting offer. They were like, we have an offer for this. We have an offer for that. And I'm like, wow. But I literally just spent the last five months getting no brand deals and within two weeks of me having management i've got a couple like i've got more than two that's crazy yeah crazy and then when i finally like did post about it on instagram like i had to you know change all my emails to my brand my brand management email <laughs> i had to change all my emails and I put it like in my bio and then I tagged my um, my management agency like in my Instagram story and they were like, they responded to it in my stories. No, they responded to it in my DMs and they were like, wow, like, I'm actually about to pull it up because it was so, it was like, it was so bittersweet. Like it literally made me shed one tear. But I tagged them and I was like officially a part of the CFG talent roster. Hashtag mama we made it. It's been so hard not talking about this. With like the prayer hands up. And then they sent a, a gif. A gif? I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see that. But it's like a gif like pointing up, looking up, and it says it's a full circle moment. And then I scrolled up because literally right above that there had been no conversation obviously. But right above that was the DM that I sent them last year asking, you know, if they were bringing on talent and if they were looking for anybody new and how i would love to get an email contact and what they said back to me and i was just like wow <laughs> i couldn't 
I, I genuinely, you guys, like, it wasn't even that I was working towards one day getting that yes from them. Um, I knew I was just working towards, like, actually having management. But, like, I wasn't working towards, like, circling back and being like, hey, I'm ready now. Like, it wasn't even that. Like, it genuinely just happened like that because it was supposed to happen like that. Literally. Like, I took that no and I was just like, I took it on the chin and I was like, okay, like, bet. What are we going to do? To eventually get you management like what are we gonna do to get you a part of an agency like wh what what are the steps you need to take yeah like for that to have been the way that things happen and i and i wouldn't have been able to guess that in a million years i was just like wow and it, it truthfully really all came from the fact that i was on tiktok live just chatting with my followers like because that's just something i do i don't do it as often i really should do it more <laughs> I love them. I'm like dang if that came out of it what else could come out of it no but like I really should do it more because I really do just love sitting and talking on the phone talking chatting on FaceTime just chatting in general I love to talk um if you can't tell yeah for that to have come out of this and just me being me and like for it to literally be like a full circle moment like brought back I was just like wow tears literally like sheds several freaking tears i told my when i told my family and stuff they were really happy for me when i told my friends they were really excited for me because they know that this is something that i've been working towards like i've been talking about management for years now like i've, I've talked about it honestly and I, I i think that also definitely goes like hand in hand with my manifestation like Aside from doing the work to get what I need and get get what I want, I've been talking about it for years. I literally, I I can recall me being at events and people are like, oh, do you have management? And I'm like, no, I don't have management, but I would love to have management one day. Oh, really? I'm like, yeah, like, I definitely think that would elevate. And I've, and I've spoken it and I've spoken it and I've spoken it and I've spoken it into, into existence and I've spoken it because I know that that was something that I wanted for myself. And yeah, mama, we made it. And this happening like literally right at the end of 2023, I just feel so, I'm gonna say it, I don't care. I, Cause I know it's gonna happen, but I feel so good about next year. I feel like next year is definitely going to be me stepping into my biggest bag yet period it's gonna be a, a prosperous year it's gonna be a fruitful year it's gonna be a year of me working hard but me also like enjoying the fruits of my labor it's going to be hopefully not even i'm not gonna say hopefully it's gonna be a year of financial gain and comfort period because i can't i don't want to go back to what i previously felt and experienced i feel like I took from it what I could. I learned from the experience, but I want to move forward and I want to move up. And I know I'm going to have all of those things. So yeah, that is my year in a nutshell. I feel like I was talking for a really long time and I hope you guys enjoyed that story. I uh, I know my friends are coming over later, but like I think I'm going to do just like TikTok and Instagram content for that because this video, that was a... That was really, like, that was good. <laughs> that was a nice little story time. But I love you guys so much. I, I just want to say this first. Hold on. Before I close it out. 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 I just want to say this first. I literally would not be able to do what I do today, tomorrow, the day after, the day before. I wouldn't be able to do anything that I do if it weren't for you guys watching at home. If it weren't for you liking, if it weren't for you subscribing, if it weren't for you tapping into my content on my other platforms, sharing my comment, sharing my content, commenting under it. Like literally that goes, it goes so far for me and it does so much for me. And I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful. And I want to continue to be able to give back to you guys going forward as well. Like that's something that I really, really, really want to do. So, but I love you guys so much. I really do. I really do. I love you guys. Like, I, because what, what's that one? I was like, I don't want to get a job. I don't want to work no more. Like, I didn't want, I didn't want that to be me. But like, if I had to, obviously I would. But like, I didn't want that. 
No, but this is a job. This is honestly, this is a job. This is a job. This is a career, babe. This is um, this is work. Okay, ain't nothing about this easy. It's something that genuinely brings me so much joy, and I thoroughly and like I I just love doing this. I love doing it. I love creating. I'm such a creative person. Like I love creating, and this is what comes to me naturally. Like this is who I always meant to be this is who i've always been that's what i was trying to say just this person and i'm so happy that i'm able to be this person every day like it's a privilege and i'm and i'm so and i don't take that lightly and i'm so thankful that i'm able to do it so i love you guys merry christmas happy new year i hope 2024 is such a prosperous and amazing and and fruit all of the things that i want for myself i want that for you too and i know that it's gonna be because you're gonna put in the work you're gonna manifest but you're gonna do what you need to do to make that happen and i love you guys so much and i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a huge thumbs up down below go ahead and click that subscribe button and join the tribe don't forget you are smart, you are beautiful, people love you, I love you, and I can't wait to see my next video. Bye!